right now with the anti-resonance. So first thing I have to do is figure out how to get that woofer inside this cabinet. So I've got my speaker cabinet stretcher ready to go. And the plan is basically stretch this out so that I can get this 18 inch woofer in this cabinet. <laughs> I'm just joshing it. All right, let's get rolling with the sound deadener test, okay? So here's my plan of action. I've got the cabinet, it's still bare on the inside, no insulation or anything. It's just the silent sound deadener and the boom mat spray. So here's kind of my working plan, is I want to test this cabinet um, without the drivers in it. I know I tested it with the drivers before, but I did get sound coming through the woofer as well as the port. So what I wanna do this time, I'll leave the cabinet empty it's just got the silent sound deadener pads and the boom mat spray. I'm gonna turn it upside down on this yoga mat and hopefully it'll, you know, kind of block some of the sound from coming out of the speaker cabinet. Then I'll mount the exciter externally and see if we can get this cabinet to sing. Well, I think to be as fair about this as possible, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this phone, the camera, uh, the microphone that you're hearing this over. I will have it, oh, it's probably within 18 inches, probably no more than two feet away from the speaker cabinet. So you can see I've got the Dayton mic set up. I've got the frequency software run. I've got an exciter mounted to the back panel of the speaker. I'll go ahead and turn on the receiver, turn on some music, see if we can hear music coming out of it first. All right, there you go. I can hear it a little bit. So it's at negative 30 dB. I'm sure you can hear from the sound of my voice that this isn't, it's not very loud at all. But we are, we're introducing sound to this directly through the exciter. So this is negative 20, which this would be like a normal listening. This would be pretty loud actually. This is to give you an idea of how far away you are from this cabinet. So not very far. Just to give you an idea of what you're listening to right now, that exciter's still on the back panel, and now you're listening to the sound coming out of the 
inside of the cabinet. It's at negative 20 dB, which is, you know, that's pretty, that's fairly loud. The main thing I wanted to try to do with this is to see if I could make the cabinets resonate. The thought process behind that was that if you've got the woofer mounted in here, that's the only thing that's gonna resonate because the mid-range is sealed, so is the tweeter. So the idea being is that if that woofer can create enough high frequency resonance to make this cabinet kind of sing the way it is right now. You know, now we've heard what it sounds like. We'll go ahead and measure it and see how it measures. Now I will say that this is a flawed system. This is not, uh, this is definitely not super scientific. And as a matter of fact, I noticed something here uh, that this exciter actually does make noise by itself, it seems like. And I'll show you that. So it seems like this is actually making noise. I feel it vibrating. But as far as the cabinet making noise, We are right next to like the side. So I've got a little bit of an epiphany here. I'm going to try to isolate this exciter a little bit and cover it with an empty cardboard box. Put some, you know, blankets, pillows, whatever I can find on top of it, just to try to, you know, reduce any kind of uh, interference that we're hearing out of the back. So what you're listening to right now, I think is probably a pretty fair representation of what we would hear. Uh, this is down by like at least 30 dB. You could tell by the sound of my voice how, you know, what the difference there is. Um, but playing music, I'm sure that this would be at least 30 dB quieter than the music that was playing. So as far as being a uh, huge audible uh, distraction or something like that. I don't really see that happening. Right now I'm measuring it on the most vulnerable panel on the speaker cabinet, which is the back panel. Uh, it's the largest thing. It's got the least amount of bracing and everything else. So what we're listening to right now is like worst case scenario. And keep in mind too, that this exciter is trying to operate over the entire frequency range as if it's a full range. Now the woofer is just going to be operating in a limited range with a crossover point that starts rolling off at 12 dB per octave. That being said, we can hear music through it right now. Uh, it's not really loud, but I will go ahead and run a frequency sweep. We'll find out where this cabinet really starts to resonate at. Well, to keep you in the thick of the action here, I've got to set up so that you can see the frequency sweep running you'll see the frequency graph. You see the mic is right next to the speaker cabinet. Uh, the volume setting, I'm gonna go ahead and test it at negative 20 dB.
All right, so there's the results. Uh, not super crazy, um, pretty quiet. You know, it's got some resonance. It kind of pops up from about, oh, say roughly 200. It starts making racket by about 280, almost 300. It's about as loud as it's gonna get. And that carries through to about 450. There's a slight, you know, rise there, and then it kind of goes back down, picks up again around 700. So hopefully everything past, say, this point here, uh, probably close to this point where it's dipping down, actually. The woofer will be rolling off at 12 dB per octave. Um, I think that I've demonstrated that we can make a cabinet uh, make noise, sing, by introducing a direct frequency through an exciter. I don't think that that's very representative of the real world. I don't think that the back of a woofer creating sound pressure is going to concentrate and focus it the way that that exciter does to the point where it would resonate so much. But nonetheless, I've demonstrated kind of what would be a worst case scenario. I can go ahead and hook up the crossover to the woofer. And again, see where we're at. That would be especially important to see against this, because we would know if it's gonna be a huge problem or not. You know, if it's, if it's crossing over, it's rolling over nice, then you know, anything beyond that green mark shouldn't even matter. Um, the next test after that, would be putting the insulation in the box with the woofer with the crossover. And, you know, ultimately, all the drivers should be hooked up to the crossover. Um, it's, it's not gonna react exactly the same as it would as if all the drivers were attached, but if we're just running the woofer, uh, it's still going through the low pass, and it's not gonna be, like I say, it's not gonna be representative of it when it's, you know, when all of the drivers are connected to the crossover, but it'll give us kind of a rough idea of what that inductor is doing, what that uh, roll off is like. Uh, so yeah, I think that that's the next step. After that, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm ready to go on these. I'm ready to get them done. Um, I'm anxious to listen to them. So thanks again for joining me and comments, suggestions, anything like that, drop them in the comments. Thanks again.